What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Hookshot Podcast. Today, we'll be giving our UFC 294 fight card predictions. If you're new to these, my name is Lucas Cohen. I'm here with my friend Rohan Borges. Let's just get right into it. Before we talk about the main event, we'll start with the main event, co-main event, and then go down the card. We're not going to talk about every single fight because then we'd be here all day. Just the ones that stick out on paper. Um, but Rohan, overall, thoughts on the card, thoughts on the last-minute change-ups, and I, I know you're excited. How excited Dude, I can't even tell you how excited I am. This is going to be absolutely wild. The fact that Kamaru and Alex were willing to step up on 10 days' notice to take fights of these ma- of this magnitude, it just, it's just it's insane, unprecedented stuff. I cannot wait. The card is incredible. I'm sure you agree. <laughs> I agree, man. I agree. And again, I may be more excited for this card yeah. than the previous card. Obviously, Hamza, Paulo Costa, grudge match. Islam Charles, I, I kind of felt like Islam was going to win again. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe Charles knocks him out, but I just don't see that happening. Here we've got uh, Volk stepping in for the rematch. It was a close fight for the first time. And, you know, Volk 11 days to prepare, but maybe he pulls it off. I don't think so, but still should be exciting. And then the co-main, Kamaru Usman's been begging for this fight. He finally gets it. Is he past his prime? Is he not? I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Let's start by breaking down this main event. Islam Mahachev taking on... Alexander Volkanovsky, the second time they'll be fighting. 145 champ versus the 155 champ fighting at lightweight. This should be fun. However, I just don't see how Volkanovsky wins. I, I just, I can't. I mean, less time to prepare. You already lost the first time around with all this preparation, with Craig Jones in your camp for weeks on weeks on weeks. And now you have 11 days. How much is he going to be able to help you in those 11 days with that Sambo, with that grappling, with this, with one of these Dagestani Sambo guys? You need a full training camp to beat them, and that's just a fact. You can't debate it. I, I have to go Islam Makachev. I'm, maybe he gets him out of there this time around. I don't think so. Um, give me Islam to win by decision again, but but it's gonna be it's gonna be easier for him this time around. What do you think? Oh man, it's so tough to call this one, and you know, major respect for out to, to Alex once again for taking this. But man, I I don't see him winning this fight either. I don't see a finish in this fight on either side. I think both of these guys in that first matchup, they showed how tough both of these guys are. I mean, they are absolutely tough as nails, and I just don't see a finish in this fight. But Islam's wrestling is something that is so, so tough to deal with. And we saw it in that first fight. You know, Alex lost three of those rounds pretty convincingly, and a large part was because he got held down, you know, for minutes at a time. And he wasn't able to just escape when he was, you know, in dangerous positions against the fence, which Islam is going to put you in. He's going to have success putting you there because that style that he has is just, it's un, it's impossible to deal with. But, mm-hmm. you know, Alexander Volkanovsky striking, I think he got a little bit ahead of himself uh, in that first fight, just given that he, it was in Perth, it was in Australia. You could see how excited he was to go out there and, and, and really get those two belts. You know, it's a big challenge and a big accomplishment in front of him. But I think he rushed it a little bit, and I think Islam caught him, you know, a little by surprise with his striking, and, uh, you know, he knocked him down, and he had a really, really big moment in that fight on the feet. I just think Islam is so well-rounded. We don't give him enough credit for how technical he is everywhere, and he is just so, so, so tough to deal with over the course of a five-round fight. I love Alex. I know he has what it takes to get the fight, uh, to the job done in this one. I know he can win this fight. I can't see him doing it, though. And, uh, yeah, I got Islam by decision. I'm with I'm with you, man. And, again, if, if Islam maybe pulls off, like, a similar choke he did, did to Charles, like the arm triangle, that's one of his yeah. favorite chokes, I wouldn't be surprised if he can tap him out. But um, I, I got to go Islam. I got to go – give me, like, a 49-46 decision. Yeah, I, I, I can see I feel like that. that's fair. I can see it. But we're both going Islam in the rematch. It makes the most sense. Uh, let's does. move on to the co-main event. Out is Paulo Costa. In steps in Kamaru Usman. He'll be taking on the guy that pretty much nobody wants to fight in Hamza Chemayev. And I want to go Usman. I really do. I feel like if this was at 170, if this was a five-round fight, I, in fact, would be going Kamaru Usman. But this is a middleweight fight. This is a three-round fight. Everything about that favors Hamza Chemayev. And also, Usman stepping in on 10 days' notice. I have to go Hamza Chemayev here. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe Usman puts up a fight. Maybe it ends up in a close decision. But but all in all, I'm going to go Hamza Chemayev by, by knockout. I mean, we, really? we just don't know... If Usman's chin is still there, and yes, I know, I know, he ate that big knee from Edwards in the second fight, but still, he's moving up to 185, he's fighting a bigger guy, uh, I don't know, I just got that bad feeling, yeah. Chemayev is going to put him out cold. I, I hope not, man, <laughs> I really, really hope not, I just, 
I love Kamaru Usman so much. I want him to get back on track in a huge way, put himself back in line for it's a tough title year, shot. Though, man. It's, it, tough. it's gonna be so, so tough to beat Hamzat Shemaev in his backyard. This guy is a wild man. And honestly, I just I don't like this matchup for Kamaru whatsoever. I think that, you know, you you alluded to it a little bit. At this stage in his career, after such a devastating knockout against Leon the first or the second time they fought, we saw in that third matchup he he looked to have lost a step, or or maybe just he wasn't he didn't he didn't look like himself. You know, he looked a little too cautious, a little a little tentative in there, and he he was having trouble finding his jab, working behind his jab like he usually does on the feet. And the offensive wrestling was kind of neutralized, and and Leon did a good job. But if he's not able to hurt Leon Edwards and and, and have any success on the feet, and and really even have it much much success in the wrestling department against Leon Edwards, how is he going to do that? against a guy like Hamza Shemaev, who is always, always in your face. Kamaru Usman makes his money by pressuring guys and, and you know, just pushing the pace on them, working behind his jab and working on that front foot. He has not had success on the, the back foot. We haven't really seen him in, in many situations where he's had to, had to fight like that. And I don't think he can do that against somebody like Hamza, who's already, you know, got a huge size advantage on him. And that chin of his is crazy. I don't think Kamaru has... Any, any chance of knocking him out, really. And I think the wrestling is going to be kind of neutralized because Hamzat's an incredible wrestler in his own right. I think it's a bad matchup all around, and uh, Hamzat, by decision, is going to be my pick. I think uh, Kamaru's tough, but yeah. No. Yeah, and you know, again, I, I really would have went with Kamaru Usman. If this was a five-round fight at welterweight yeah, during yeah, yeah. his peak times, yeah. I really would have went Usman. Uh, I, but again, you make a great point that I, I wasn't even thinking about before. And I already thought this was a bad matchup now that it's at 185 and now that he has barely any time to prepare. But again, Usman does fight so well when he's on, on that front, front foot. foot. Yeah. It's not happening against Chemayev. It, there's just no world where Chemayev is on the back foot. Maybe yeah. maybe he gets tired in round three. But I feel like at that time, at that point, he's already going to have banked rounds one and rounds two. Yeah. And we cannot see that Kamaru Usman that, that fought in that last fight against Leon where he he looked scared to throw at times. You know, we saw part of the reason Hamza had a lot of trouble with Gilbert is because he was taking it right back to him. He was not scared to stand and trade with him in a phone booth. Mm -hmm. And we when have we seen Kamaru Usman do that and, and succeed in that kind of fight? I don't think it's there for him, man. I would love, it would be an incredible upset for him to do this on 10 days notice. I think it's next to impossible, though. I do. Next to impossible. It's just Hamza is impossible. Fucking, it's I, I I don't see. So it, if man. you say that the Lions right now, uh, the, what is the betting he? odds? He's currently only a minus two ninety. What would you make? The He's minus two ninety. Yeah, I, I would probably have it closer to like. Uh, well, Hamza's minus two ninety. You're saying I would I would have him closer to like. If it's near impossible, I I don't know. I just I, maybe that's a bit of exaggeration. I I don't think it's that you know far fetched. But it is it is really far fetched though, man. Kamar Usman mm -hmm. coming off of such a devastating knockout to. to beat Hamza Shemaev, an undefeated Hamza Shemaev, it would be such an incredible, incredible accomplishment. I just don't see it happening, but yeah, that's just me. I'm with you, man. We're both going Hamza Shemaev in that matchup. Those are the two big fights on the card, but we're not going to stop there. We're going to talk about another fight that a lot of people are talking about. Yeah. Magomed Ankalaev taking on Johnny Walker. I'm looking forward to this one, man. Yeah, Magomed too. Ankalaev, you know, a lot of people think he should be the champion. I honestly think that was a rightful draw in that matchup between a uh, Uncle Laev and uh, who do you fight? Blahovich. Blahovich, yes. Um, I'm going to go Magomed Uncle Laev in this yeah, matchup. And yeah. he's a big favorite, minus 300, I believe. Um, I, I just think he has Johnny Walker covered everywhere. And, and although Johnny Walker did get the job done against Anthony Smith and won convincingly, I don't know. That wasn't really a convincing performance to me against the guy in Anthony Smith, Smith who's, who's getting up there in age, who, who isn't all that great anymore. I just think Uncle Laev, he has so much to prove. Like this is his spot. Not only that, he's gonna be he's gonna have the crowd behind him. I think he could finish Johnny Walker, man. I really do. Yeah. Which which a lot of people may disagree with because he he wins a lot of decisions. I think Magomed Uncle Laev could get Johnny Walker out of there. And I'm curious what the what the what the odds are on that. Because I, I again, as I mentioned, he wins a lot of fights by decision, you know. Uncle Laev finished Anthony Smith. And Walker did have a he, – he won convincingly, but it was still tit for tat at yeah. moments. The line's not out yet for Uncle Live inside the distance. I'm going to be curious what it is when it does come out. But I'm going Uncle Live in this matchup. I have to. And I know it's boring. We keep going with the favorites. But that's just how I feel. And I know you're going to agree probably. I got to agree with you, man. I have to agree. I, I love the trend that Johnny Walker has shown us, you know, over these past few fights. He's looked better and better and better. 
And, uh, you know, obviously part of that is just, you know, toning down, toning back that, that crazy style that he has. You know, he's, he's been a little more technical, a little more aware of, of what's coming back at him. But Ankalaev, guys, I personally, I know you think that was a rightful draw. I thought he, he won that fight against Jan Bohovic. Really? I think he should Watching have been Watching it champ. live, I thought he won too. I thought he won, man. You got to remember. I he won. You got to remember. Those were some convincing rounds, rounds two and rounds right, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and again, I think that Johnny Walker, uh, he's got, you know— He's got a puncher's chance, more than a puncher's chance in this fight. You know, he's he's a powerful fight. He's a powerful striker. He's got, you know, he's rangy. He's so long. He's unpredictable. You never really know what to expect when you're fighting him. But Ankalaev is so seasoned and smart in there. He, he takes his time. He always makes sure to keep his distance. And he works behind those teeps really well. You know, he works behind that jab. I, he's got great wrestling, wrestling defense and offense. I don't really think Johnny's going to have much success there. And the fact that this is a, a three-round fight, I think that does favor Johnny a little bit. But I, I don't know, man. I can't see him winning this fight. Ankalaev is just so, so skilled and, and well-rounded. And I, he's he's on a roll too, man. When's the last time he lost to Paul Craig? That's yeah, I, I really think the story of this fight is that Ankalaev has Walker covered yeah, everywhere. He does, yeah, everywhere. he's just better. I and think. it's as simple as that. He's yeah. just the better overall fighter. Agreed. We're both going Magomed Ankalaev. In that fight, and when it comes to fights that really pop off the page, I feel like that's it. I mean, yeah. Ikram Al Alaskarov versus N Nasruddin Imavov. I think that would have been a wonderful fight. Yeah. You know, Ikram, he's great with the wrestling. However, Imavov, he's got some crisp striking. But however, let's not talk about that. In steps in Warley Alves, <laughs> the aging Warley Alves. Yeah. How old is 37, he? Thirty-seven, I think. Right? 32? Thirty-two. Thir oh, thirty-two. Damn. Don't hate on him. I, 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 I thought I was thinking about somebody else, but still, he's had close fights. He's had bad losses recently. Knocked up by Jeremiah Wells. Split decision loss against Nicholas Dalby. That's and they expect him right to get there, the job yeah. done against Ikram Alaskarov. I have to go Ikram here. And again, Ikram is a guy that I may be fading once he, he uh, gets into the upper echelon of that middleweight division. You know, this guy does not have the best striking. He was back and forth with Phil Hawes on the feet, man, until he found the KO blow. And that's simply because Phil Hawes is a dog shit shin. <laughs> However, Warley Alves, not the best takedown defense, especially nowadays. Um, he's been submitted before by Randy Brown, too, man. He's, he's been submitted. Uh, that was his only submission loss, but still, for for you to get submitted by Randy Brown, not a good look at all. Yeah, I have to go Ikram Alaskarov by submission. What do you think? I agree, man. I think that's probably the the likeliest outcome here. That dude has just such nasty jujitsu, and he's great at transitioning to those you know crazy positions where he'll isolate one of your limbs and and finish you. We saw it on the Contender Series where he got that uh, Kimura finish, right? And uh, yeah, he showed he has power. And, you know, I get Phil Hawes' chin is not, you know, the, the, the worst chin. Yeah, <laughs> he's got... Shout out to Phil Hawes. Uh, great yeah, cornering job again, with Dylan right? Dennis. With Dylan that. Dennis, man. He's always around. But, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think uh, Aliskarov is just, you know, he's better everywhere. And, and to mm -hmm. your point, Warley Alves, he's aging. You know, his last few fights, how are you losing to Nicholas Dalby and, and Jeremiah Wells? We're not going to pick man, you to pick. Uh, to beat uh, Ikram Aliskarov, who's who's on a roll right here. I agree with you that you know later on when he starts to make his way up those rankings, he might you know start to run into some I really trouble. I do think he against, will. If yeah, he fights a good striker yeah, with yeah. with good takedown defense, like him versus uh, Vittori, because honestly Vittori has some underrated. I agree. Striking, I think Vittori could right? beat him. Yeah. That'd be an interesting one. But yeah, I think uh, this is a really safe spot for him, though. I think he gets it done easily. And uh, yeah, I got Is Ikram inside the distance for sure. Ooh, I like that. I'm going to go specifically submission. But yeah. I could see him getting a knockout. You never know. Um, other fights popping off the page. Tim Elliott versus Muhammad Makayev. Actually, this is another one that I'm really looking forward to. Oh, yeah. Because uh, Makayev called out Elliott. Elliott took the fight. We all know what, what went down in, in Elliott's life over the summer with the whole marriage situation. Uh, his wife cheating on him on like wedding day. And Yikes, then man. With a former <laughs> UFC fighter, Kevin I got to refresh my memory. Bro, I forgot about I forgot that about shit. that, right? Holy but shit. But I, I want Tim oh to win. God. I just can't pick against him. Muhammad Makayev, up and coming stud, man. I mean, this guy, you know, I was a little bit turned off after uh, his fight against Malcolm Gordon. Yeah. He, I remember he snuck that submission out in Literally round three. Literally four minutes and 26 seconds he got it done. But, but Malcolm Gordon was not supposed to win a second of that fight. Yeah, yeah. He won a few minutes yeah. of that fight, man. Um, he's going up against Tim Elliott. It's going to be a tough fight, but all in all, I do see Makai getting the job done. I think this guy's utterly talented. We know he is dealing with some injuries. I mean, he just got his fucking leg ripped apart by Filho and uh, ended up submitting him by ruining a choke just a few minutes later, mm -hmm. like seconds after, I believe. I got to rock with the, the up-and-coming stud, Muhammad Makai. I think Tim, El Tim Elliott will have his moments for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But fight prediction, I don't know how he gets it done. Give me a second to think about that, but give me Makai to get this one done. I'm sorry. We're boring. We're going with yeah, the Yeah, I got I to gotta agree with you again, but, I mean, dude, I will say that Tim Elliott is a live dog. I know he's plus, like, 400, mm. 600, right? Plus 600? No, 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 no. Is it plus 425? Plus, like, 200-something. Not that crazy. Is he? Uh, 
Oh wait, sorry. Excuse me. Plus three seventy on DraftKings, okay, 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 plus okay. four twenty five on Battle Nine. I don't mind that spot, man. Tim Elliott wow. is such a dog. But let, let me let me tell you, the, these flyweight fights—they're so unpredictable and insane. They they fought at such a high pace. Both mm-hmm. of these guys have insane cardio. But again, Mukayev is is so young. He's so talented. Just that raw talent that he has. His dangerous jujitsu, his his incredible offensive wrestling, and then the striking is coming together well. I think you know, obviously, he's had a few scary performances in the past where you're like, is he really worth the hype? You know, but I think this is a perfect test for him and Tim Elliott, who's somebody who's always game, always dangerous. I could see Tim pulling off an insane upset, but I gotta roll with the favorite Makayev as well. Makes the most and sense. And I, I I don't think he finishes him actually. I I think uh, Makayev by decision is Fair. gonna be my pick, but uh, it's gonna be an insane fight. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm sure. excited too. I'm going Makayev. Um, do I go submission? I don't know. Tim Elliott. I, he's I, got nasty. He's been submitted too, five though, times. Yeah, that is true. That is true. He's but been he's, arm triangle by those, Roy Val, guillotine yeah. by Figueredo. Figueredo does have a nasty yeah, guillotine. Yeah, he didn't true. get submitted by Demetrius. I don't know. Dude, look it. at this guy. I'm rocking though, with you. I'm rocking with you. Makayev by decision. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about one more fight on this card and a fight that I don't actually know too much about, but tons of people are talking about. Bruno yeah. Silva, I know I know a lot about. But Sharap Putin Magomedov, this one-eyed Dagestani, eleven and zero. I don't know. Like I, I'm not, I can't even give you guys a prediction because I don't know a lot about him. It seems like Have he's you been facing bumps. I've seen his highlights. He looks been, they good. look crazy. <laughs> but, but he's fighting these average fighters. Yeah, yeah. Again, right? that's the thing. That's always the thing. But I yeah. feel like the UFC, it, this is a spot for Magomedov to get it done. So Maybe. blindly, don't trust me, but give me Sharp Putin by Magomedov. He's favored. I mean, he's favored, and Bruno Silva is really tough. But but this guy, he seems to have some crazy striking. He seems to always like use his kicks instead of his punches. He has a weird like unorthodox style of striking. Uh, he just throws so many kicks, but also uh, has some real crazy power. I-, I could see a finish in this fight for sure. And uh, yeah, I guess why not? Just I'll roll with you. Look. Shara Putin. <laughs> there we go. There we Shara go. Putin. Oh, Shara shit, Putin's getting loud. it done. Sorry. Jesus, oh my God. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all we got to break down this card. On, on the Discord, I'm going to be breaking down every single one of these fights from a betting perspective, from just an overall prediction perspective. So if you want the rest of the predictions, just go check that out. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys enjoyed this new flag. Oh, yeah. We're Connor upgrading. with the two belts. Upgrade. Dildo dance in the bottom corner. <laughs> Love to see it. But uh, for now, it's been Lucas and Rohan. Deuces. Peace.